So we're going to find the region enclosed by sine of 2x, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals pi over 4. So let's just get a quick sketch of what's going on here. So if we put in a sine curve, now for sine of x, this would be pi, but for sine of 2x, it's pi over 2, which means we're only going to go to about halfway right there. So, and it's closed by y equals 0. That's going to be important for us. That means this is our region. Now we're rotating around the line y equals negative 2. So if we put in a line at y equals negative 2, since this thing was closed off, notice that we're going to have, when we rotate this around, we're going to have an open center. So we're going to have a bit of a, of a washer here. Not a great drawing, but you can kind of, hopefully you can kind of envision what that would look like flipped around. Now, to set this thing up, we're going to go with our, our standard, our big radius minus our small radius. And our big radius is from the curve down, so there's our big radius. Our small radius is from the axis down, so the small radius is a constant. Looking at our drawing there, our big radius is the function, which is this distance right here, plus another two units. So sine of 2x plus 2. Our little radius is actually, and it's the same no matter where we look at it, whether we look at it here or here, it's always just 2. This will allow us to set up our integral in the following format. And we kind of can see from our drawing that our limits are just 0 to pi over 4. We're going to multiply by pi. And we're looking at the big radius squared minus the small radius squared. And we're doing this one in terms of x because we're going around uh, an axis that is horizontal with the x-axis. Now, let's go ahead and plug our functions in and see what we have to do. I like pulling the pi out of the integral, so we'll write it as pi. 0 to pi over 4. Our big radius, which we said was sine of 2x plus 2 squared. That'll need to be foiled out. You cannot just distribute the 2. Oops, not minus, excuse me. Minus, not plus, we need minus. Minus 2 squared dx. Now, we do need to foil out that first part right here. So that's going to be what we do next, because we're going to end up with a sine squared in here, which is going to require an identity. So our limits aren't changing. Right now, let's foil that out. We get sine squared of 2x plus 4 sine of 2x plus 4, and then minus a 4 because of the 2 squared, dx. Now we're going to use an identity here for the sine squared. We've seen this one before, but just as a reminder, we can use for an identity sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. This is one of our double angle or sl slash half angle identities from trig. And the key is that th this angle is always half of this angle. So the fact that we're dealing with sine squared of 2x means it's going to be cosine of 4x on the other side. So let's make that substitution so we can continue on with our integral. So we have pi Limits are still the same, 0 to pi over 4. We're going to rewrite this guy using that identity. So 1 minus, as I said, it'll be cosine of 4x because we had sine squared of 2x. That angle has to be doubled, hence a double angle identity. All over 2 plus 4 sine of 2x. And we can see in the line above those 4s will cancel, so that's 
our integral now. This is what we have to evaluate to get this volume. Now what I'm going to do, because I don't want to deal with fractions here, I'm going to pull that out front and write this as pi over 2. Now that's great for this first one, because this is because it was 1 minus cosine of 4x. But I do have to take into consideration that this is also now had a, two, a half factored out. So this becomes plus 8 sine of 2x dx. We are now ready to take our antiderivative. So we have the pi over 2 still out front. The antiderivative of 1 is just x. The antiderivative of cosine of 4x is sine of 4x over 4. We're undoing the chain rule. So if we were taking the derivative, we'd have to multiply by 4. Taking the antiderivative, we divide by 4. Now we have plus 8. Similarly, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of 2x over 2 dx. And we're going to simplify just a little bit here. For instance, we can cancel that down to a 4. And we have the negative and the positive. We'll take care of that in the next line. Excuse me, we didn't need a dx here as we are taking the antiderivative. And this is from 0 to pi over 4. All right, we are ready to plug in our limits. So we have pi over 2. Let's plug in the pi over 4 first. So pi over 4 in for x minus this is going to become, when I plug pi over 4 in for x, 4 times pi over 4 is pi, so sine of pi over 4, minus, now again, because of this negative here, minus 4. If I plug pi over 4 in for 2x, I'm going to have pi over 2, so cosine of pi over 2. And there's the first half, that's with pi over 4 plugged in. Now we need to plug in our zeros. Plugging in 0 for x is 0. And then we'll have minus sine of 0 over 4. And finally, minus 4 cosine of 0. A lot of this stuff cancels. For instance, sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi is 0. So if we look at what we have left, we have the pi over 2 out front. We have this pi over 4 still left. These terms canceled. Last thing we have is this minus 4 cosine of 0, because cosine of 0 is 1. But this negative would get distributed to it. So that's actually going to be plus 4. And cosine of 0 again is 1. And we might take this one step further distribute this term here that'll give us pi squared over 8 and here will give us plus 2 pi and there's a nice exact answer to this definite integral